Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback look at the Sony Ericsson Vivos Pro. This was a smartphone released in 2010, making it almost a decade old, and along with the Vivos, the Vivos Pro, which simply has a slide-out QWERTY keyboard, were two of the first phones in the market to have HD video recording capabilities, and marked a step forwards for mobile photography. In fact, the Vivos and Vivos Pro even have a separate video-taking key that could launch into recording video and begin recording video instantly, regardless of whatever application you're in, and there's also a separate key to launch into the camera just for taking still images. The volume controls can also act as digital zoom, so it overall has the ergonomics of a point-and-shoot camera. Otherwise, the phone is kind of interesting because it was one of the last devices, really the last hurrah, uh, by Sony and Nokia to run on Symbian OS uh, version S60 5th edition before Android basically took over. Even in 2009-2010, Symbian was beginning to show its age, uh, especially since this phone still used a resistive touchscreen that requires quite a bit of pressure to tap and press, as opposed to a capacitive screen that was made out of glass, like on the iPhone and uh, newer Android devices. Otherwise, the phone is is made predominantly out of plastic, so it is very much lightweight, and the biggest shock is really how much larger phones have gotten. This thing feels tiny. Against a regular 6-inch phone from 2019, it looks like a toy uh, by comparison. The rear also features an LED flash, and also here is where the power key is located. Also, you can tap on this to lock and unlock the display. So kind of like LG's phones, it made it a little bit more ergonomic to press without putting onto the sides of the phone. Now on the other side, we have access to a micro USB port for charging, a standard 3.5mm headphone jack, and a lanyard strap. The phone is etched in chrome and has a slight curve to the rear, which uh, went in line with Sony's kind of human-centric design back in the day that made it conform to the shape of your hand as you're holding it, making it feel like a pebble. In a way, Sony is kind of coming back to this design language, by the way, with their latest generation of Android phones, so it's interesting how design sometimes can repeat, just like fashion trends. Now this phone did not have a front-facing camera of any sort, but it does have a proximity light sensor, there is built-in Wi-Fi, there's built-in AGPS and Bluetooth, and supports 3G bands. And down below here we have three hard keys which are backlit that we can use to answer reject phone calls and open up the main uh, menu for uh, navigating the handset. Now if we slide open the QWERTY keyboard, we see it's a four-row layout, uh, which is relatively spacious and comfortable to type on. The keys themselves have an island or chiclet style layout to them and have a good responsiveness to them overall. The keys are also backlit, by the way, which makes them pretty easy to see, especially in the dark, and also adds a pretty futuristic touch. Now if we take a closer look at the UI experience, it's exactly the same as other Symbian phones that Sony released around this era. It had the same slight customization on top of the platform that Sony did, like this live wallpaper that you could tilt and the water kind of flowed depending on how you held it, as well as some widgets, and Sony's emphasis was on social media as well. You had a separate page dedicated to Twitter and other web links. It's the same interface that we saw on the Sony Ericsson Satio, so not too much has changed here. I can swipe over to take a look at some shortcuts to access the web browser. The other kind of tab here is used to access Twitter, um, a separate screen just for that. The phone does have haptic vibration, by the way, so it slightly buzzes whenever you tap on the screen to give you a physical registration or sensation. With that being said, it's definitely a pretty weak vibration motor compared to the haptic engines of modern phones feel a lot more responsive. Anyways, there's another widget here just dedicated for camera images that you take, and you can cycle back and forth between them. Works quite well. And then the last tab over is for shortcuts to other applications like YouTube, Facebook, whatever you want to customize can be added along over there. Now we can also jump directly back and forth between these pages, uh, and if I tap on the center key here, that's what takes me into the full list of applications. Now other things we can take a look at include applications, and includes a built-in radio, and we also have some chat services on board. The really interesting thing here that's uh, showing its age is Symbian does not have kinetic scrolling, so I can't just swipe up and down across a list, and it simply doesn't work. You have to literally go to the last row that you're looking at and hold for a few seconds for it to move down uh, more through a longer list. So it's not very intuitive at all, or you have to rely on this tiny little slider using your fingers uh, to try and go up and down through a longer list. So the UI experience is definitely archaic by today's standards. Uh, still, we have quite a few applications. We have access to a Facebook widget. Uh, there's also a QR code scanner called Neo Reader built on in, which is pretty interesting. There's a YouTube client that's basically accessing the mobile site of YouTube. There's some demo versions of games like Bubble Breaker, which are uh, still working, and Block Breaker that you can tap on and uh, it will load. Of course, uh, the selection of games and applications would be one reason where 
Android and iOS uh, triumph in the end. Symbian does have a catalog of apps that you can download, but there really isn't a cohesive app store, but uh, overall can still be kind of fun and nostalgic in a sense to play around with. Now, if we exit out of this, um, as a form aforementioned, regardless of whatever application you're in, you can launch into the camera just by simply tapping on the side keys or record video. So if we tap on the camera here, you can see it would instantly jump into that interface. There's not a lot of built-in storage at all, so you definitely need a micro SD card, which you can add behind the battery cover to expand on the storage. Other things you can adjust include the EV, you can change the focus, the scene selection, and some basic things like that. But there are no real kind of fancy uh, additional controls that you get aside from really the scenes there's no HDR either but overall it's still pretty easy to use if I wanted to take a quick image here maybe of this uh, colorful box uh, we can simply tap on it for a few seconds and otherwise it can snap on the shot to view back some of those content we can tap on the media folder and from here we have an interface that's again very much customized by Sony similar to their PlayStation devices back in the day like the PSP we're able to see the photos we've taken the music and the video content that we have on our phone so for example if we take a look at our kind of pictures here um, you can see some sample images wallpapers that we can uh, kind of play around with again there is no multi-touch because it's a resistive touchscreen and uh, otherwise it is fairly colorful and it is an IPS display so you can see here that the viewing angles are actually pretty good for a phone from 10 years ago uh, not a bad quality display overall I'd say considering it's pretty small and as such still fairly colorful and sharp looking. We can sort through images we've taken by different folders and also by different dates. So the overall way of uh, navigating is actually a bit more advanced than uh, you'd, you'd expect from a device from again, 10 years ago. And we have the accelerometer that we can use to tilt the phone over and uh, take a closer look at the details within the shot. Under the location folder, we can have access to Google Maps uh, using the built-in GPS and Wise Pilot, both of which uh, still work all right, I'd say. There are some basic calculator functions on board here that allow you to add appointments and notifications which you can sync up through email and tapping on organizer you can take a look at additional um, utility tools like an alarm clock this is what the application looks like so the ui is still slightly better than what i expected uh, as far as how it's aged there's also access to a quick google search you can also access a quick converter tool a very basic calculator can be found here we also have access to a basic pdf reader and quick office for viewing back uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents when on the go that's meant for productivity. If I want to use the screen, I can use handwriting recognition um, instead of a kind of keyboard per se, or I can tap on the keyboard input here to have a mini QWERTY keyboard. This is a super cramp by today's standards, as you can see there. There is multitasking on Symbian as well. You can tap and hold on the middle key for a few seconds to take a look at your list of currently running applications and then jump, jump back and forth between them. Um, so it's, uh, for the most part, it's still more usable than I was expecting taking a look back at it. And of course, there's just simply the dialer pad if you want to make phone calls, pretty standard stuff. Finally, taking a look at the web browsing performance, the surprising thing is it still will open up certain sites. Basic ones like Wikipedia or Google searches will still work in decent speed if you're connected using Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi was a pretty advanced feature almost a decade ago. And on a phone like this, which at the time, Sony wasn't really marketing it as a premium flagship phone again Symbian was starting to go on the way out even back then so compared to some of the other Android offerings it was still priced uh, pretty affordably especially on AT&T's network here in the United States about a hundred dollars or so um, so as a result it uh, brought that uh, internet connectivity Wi-Fi at a relatively low price tag so if we do a quick search like for example Sony and maybe Sony Vivas we can take a quick look at how it handles that using Google and we can flip over and tap on search. And again, we are connected using Wi-Fi right now, but uh, the speed is actually very much reasonable. Um, we can slide down and the loading speeds are not too bad at all. If you download a more modern browser like Opera Mini, for example, you can get uh, it working with more sites because right now the included one out of the box is very much out of date. So lots of certificates are no longer trusted. And as a result, if you try and open up more complex pages, it'll tell you it can't open it or the memory is too low and the page will crash. I'll also point out that all the applications which are running in the background have a slight ring to them on Symbian OS. So you know that they are open in the background. And surprisingly for a phone that has under one GB of RAM, only 256 megabytes, it's actually doing a decent job of still holding up all right as far as the UI is concerned um, as we are kind of playing around with it. 
So that's more or less it as far as our throwback look at the Sony Ericsson Vivas Pro here in 2019. We've come a long way. Not really a phone that's usable by 2019 standards, I'd say. It's just the app support is uh, very much lacking, and uh, we've definitely come a long way as far as the UI navigation and uh, making things understandable is concerned and played its role in the evolution of smartphone cameras just getting progressively better and better. Nowadays, uh, the cameras in our pockets being almost good enough to rival dedicated units for just quick point and shoot instances. So you can check out more details about Sony's newer devices, as well as uh, more info about what this phone did back in the day in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's just been a quick nostalgic look back at the Sony Ericsson Vivas Pro.